Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to turn this Acrylester pen blank and this Dragon Twist pen kit into this. Let's get started. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is take your pen barrels that your kit should have come with and we're going to mark off here uh, the pieces that we need to cut. Now with Acrylester it's a very sensitive material. Actually it's one of the, for me, I find it to be the hardest materials to work with. So you, when you're cutting this and when you uh, mill it, you want to give it a wide berth and then give it enough space in case there's any blowout. So I'm going to mark right here. I'm going to give myself about a quarter inch of leeway on both sides of the barrel. So I'll know that I'm going to cut it here. And conveniently that will give enough space there. So basically for this type of pen I'm going to be just cutting this blank here in half. I'm not sure exactly what size this is. I'd, this was cut from a larger piece. But instead of cutting each piece to size right now, what I'm going to try and do is mill it first long ways. Like the entire piece I'm going to cut through it because I found that that helps reduce the chance of uh, a blowout with this type of material. So I'm hoping it'll work. Now to the drill press. Okay, so before I drill into this, what I'm going to just do here is connect the find the center point and then you just draw a line from corner to corner as you would with any other type of pen blank okay so with Acrylester it is it has a really really fine dust so you want to make sure that uh, you have your mask on and all that stuff and what I like to do is have a vac uh, and my shop vac hose right to it just to suck it up as soon as it comes out because it can be a hassle to clean up. You could also mill this with uh, on your drill press. I mean not your drill press but on your lathe if you have the correct pen jaws and uh, chucks that you need. Or if you got the, the pen press you could just do it like this. And as you do you want to make sure to take your time. Do it very slowly. Alright, so as you can see, I'll put it right there. And as even though I did it slow and steady, Acrylester did its magic, and you can see at the bottom here, it, no matter what, it's still cracked. So I do have extra blanks that I could use for this in case this just wants to completely break off. But I'm thinking that maybe I'll still be able to have enough space here to put the barrels to avoid the crack, and I could just cut it off but we'll see. Okay, so I was able to save the blank and cut past through the, uh, the crack and it will be much snugger fit on both of these than I originally had uh, hoped for and by that I mean um, I want to have a little bit more of a one fourth inch gap here as I milled it just in case that caused it to a blowout. But it, it may not. We'll see. I still do have uh, some extra to work with. But uh, what I'm going to do now is glue the barrels in place, let it give enough time to set, and then I will mill them. What you see me here using is just a, a silicone tip.
Okay, so now, just to be safe, I'm going to let both of these sit for a half hour. I've noticed that the gluing time sometimes for a Acro Lester can be a little bit longer. Sometimes even with acrylic I've had problems that it doesn't glue when it's supposed to, even though I'm using a fast-acting uh, CA glue. So just to be safe, I'm going to let that sit there for a bit, and then I will uh, mill the, the top and bottoms even, and then I will take it to the sander to round off the edges. All right, so I let the glue set, and now I'm ready to uh, use my barrel trimmer here to uh, flush up the blank ends. You always want to just stop to once you see the beginning of the barrel. It just helps to make it all flush so that when you put the pen parts in, everything will be even. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is with my belt sander, I'm going to sand off the edges here and make them as round as I can by hand. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it does make your job a little bit easier. That you you don't have to uh, worry about uh, square, you know, rounding it off. And with this material, I find that it's a lot better, and it reduces the chips that may be flying out, or you end up catching your tool and a big chunk coming off, or something like that. Because then you can just start, and it's already round. It's much easier to work with, at least especially with acrylaster. But it goes with even with when you're doing with wood, if you round it off a little bit before you start turning, you can uh, cut the process a little bit. You just want to make sure you have good uh, uh, dust collection, because again, acrylic is very dusty. There you go. They're pretty rounded. Not perfectly, but that doesn't matter. It's just the nice, nice all the square edges are off, so it should be a lot easier to turn. So on to the lathe. Also, a little quick word of advice: if you have uh, did use a belt sander, one tool that I find that really works for cleaning it up is this belt uh, cleaning stick. You just run it on here a little bit, and it takes all that stuff and it's off, and it's like new. Just a little tip. Alright, so now it's set up on my lathe and I'm going to turn these. Um, I'll probably go for a slight ovalish shape. The way I like to do it first is get the edges synced up with the bushings, um, uh, all four, and then I work and get a little apex on each one. But let's see what the material decides. I'm not sure. Sometimes it doesn't cooperate and I have to end up just doing straight uh, without a shape, just, you know, straight. And so, what I like to do, since it's acrylester, before I start turning, after I use a really uh, sharp tool that's been freshly sharpened, is I like to periodically wet the surface a little bit. And so, because again, the dust is annoying, and I find it just kind of helps it a little bit smoother. Someone else might find it different. This is just my personal thing. So as, as it's turning, I'll let some drops, uh, some water, hit it periodically here and there. Uh, again, this, everybody else has their own preference, but this is the way that I like to do it. Enough ranting. Let's get into this.
All right, now the turning is complete. I got the shape that I wanted, the nice little apex on each end here. And what I'm gonna do next is sand it, wet sand it. Uh, with Acryluster, and even with acrylic, I like to start off at 100 grit. I mean, it's different to uh, different people, different preferences, but um, I like 100 grit because it really makes sure to get off if there's any little flaws or anything in the plastic. And so then I go from 100 all the way down to 1000 grit sandpaper, and then I switch to the micro mesh, which starts at 1500 all the way to 12,000. And it's all wet sanding, which is good because Acrylester, again, that dust is very annoying. But the end results are just beautiful. I won't show you all the sanding because it can get a little tedious, so I'll just show you a little bit. See, after just one app, uh, one pass through with the 100 uh, grit, you already see it. It's already starting to get a, a shine back to it. It's pretty smooth. So now I'm gonna go through all the sand grits, and uh, after that, it'll be polishing. Now that I did all the sanding with the sandpaper, now I'm gonna use these large micro mesh pads. All right, so now I'm going to add a little polish. So I like to use some Caranuba wax. It really doesn't need it. It's already pretty shiny on its own, but I just wanted it to pop a little bit more and give it a nice little layer of protection. There we go, shiny as glass. Now, let's assemble it. Okay, so what I'm gonna be using here is my uh, Penn State pen press. It's uh, for disassembly and assembly. As you can see here, I bought it used, but when I bought it used, I didn't realize that it didn't have the handle. So I just had to uh, turn something and just put something in here temporarily as a handle. It's worked so far for me. I do have a nicer one that I'm going to probably put onto it, but it works for now. All right, so what you want to do, open up your, pa your pen package and lay out the parts. Follow the directions or uh, the instructions that show you how to lay out the parts. I'm gonna lay them out like it shows you there. So it'll be easier to put together. You want to make sure that you have the uh, the right sections because one end of the rear portion where the uh, clip is going to be is a little bit fatter. So you want that's going to be where their, the dragon's eye is going to be at. First thing I like to do is put the tip on. Of course, after you lay out the parts like I said you should. Alright, so the first thing is the front tip. Next is going to be the coupler here. You want to make sure you put it that the, the hand is facing you, like it's trying to grip towards you. And you're going to want to you know, turn it to the like the right part of the pattern where you want it to, or you could just do it randomly. Of 
I want to be careful with the threading here and not put too awkward pressure on it. Um, what they recommend is that you cut something out, like a piece of wood, and put it in front of the threader as you put the pressure so that the wood's taking the pressure, that it won't bend any of the threading here. I don't do that since I've made so many of these by now, but I would recommend doing that if you're like a beginner just trying out, just so you won't bend the threading. And what you want to do is make sure you push until the dragon claw here isn't rotating anymore. Now the rear portion, or as they call it, the lower tube. Should fit in flush. Now you can decide where you want the cap to sit. look like that. Now we're going to put the ink cartridge in. I'm going to place the spring on top here. Put it right through the middle. It should be a little bit springy. Oh, and I'm forgetting a part. This goes, this one uh, is loose, so this threads over this here. And you just twist it in until it reaches the end here. And you can see the pen is out, and then goes back in. in. Now we place the lower tube over. There it is. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this how to make a dragon twist pen video. Uh, I had a blast making it, and as usual, I'm always just blown away by the results. These are great pens to make, and every time I make one, it's just amazing. I look forward to making several more and let me know down below if you enjoyed this how-to video. Hopefully I helped you out making a, your first dragon pen if you're uh, turning or if you just want to see what was up. Also, if you're just looking to purchase a pen, find me online at the Woodworking Illustrator. Until next time, cheers.